Hey, hey, hey. Time for another Out of This World episode from our space. Mourn, baby, mourn. When a relationship ends, he only can take time. Today on our space, a man mourns the death of a good girl gone bad. Rip or good riddance, you be the judge. I guess I joined the club. So my 36 male recently separated from my soon-to-be ex-wife, the 33 female, per her request because she was unhappy. You could always go through my post history for more, but just a lack of communication and poor marriage management led us to where we are. She had all the red flags, but I never could prove she was doing anything unfaithful. That is, until today. I was helping her clean out her father's house, who recently passed away. While we were there, we had a meeting with her son's teacher on Teams, and later on, my curiosity got me hard, and I was able to get into Facebook Messenger on a laptop while she was off cleaning again. I found a chat with some guy that doesn't even live in our state, and she was saying things like, Miss you, calling him baby, and saying how she wanted to come see him. I'm absolutely gutted. We talked about it, and I, well, I didn't take it well. I can't believe I'm here. Welcome to the club, Cosmo. Update. So, I've been trying to remain cordial with my soon-be ex-wife because of our two kids. She was at least emotionally involved with another guy, but becoming more and more evident that it's more than that. I'm still friends with her on Snapchat because we just send snacks of the kids when one parent doesn't have them. We're in a group chat with some family, my cousin and his wife, my brother and his wife, and she sends a snack of herself at the airport with a company sweatshirt on that I didn't recognize. I ask what we're looking at in this snap, and she said she was in the airport eating McDonald's, waiting on her flight, then deleted the snap because she meant to send it to a different group. So, I called her out on it privately, and she admits that the sweatshirt belongs to the affair partner, and he left it there last time he visited Baltimore at his friend's, where she also was. I think the reality is that she meant to send him the snap. Needless to say, I went off on her. She keeps finding ways to delay my healing whether it's deliberate or not. The obvious answer here is to block her on everything except an app for co-parenting, but this has just set me on a spiral again. I freaking hate this. Update. I'm just going through the cycle again of good days, bad days. Been pretty positive for the most part, which is good and signs of some improvement. I have been very minimal contact with my soon to be ass wife. Only contact typically is in regard to the kids and school for the kids, etc. The unfortunate part is that her son is in two indoor soccer leagues, so I have to see her at least twice a week right now. And when I do have to see her, I try to distance myself as best as possible. But if I see little things in passing like her on her phone, I automatically assume that she's talking to the affair partner. Who doesn't and live locally to us? And maybe she's not, and I try to tell myself that to break myself out of this fuck, but I'm stuck in this rut over the past couple of days. I do the normal routine stuff to better myself. Gym, hobbies, getting out of the house, dumping my focus on myself and the kiddos. But I just can't seem to break this rut. I feel stuck, and even though we're well on the road to divorce, I don't know why I feel this way still. I know that it's over and not just in the cheating sense, but the literal end of the marriage is on the horizon, and I'm sure that I'm still grieving. I just feel like that I need some positive reinforcement, be it support, positive stories, positive outlooks, anything to help me break this current cycle that I'm in. What are you feeling right now, OP, is completely normal. A breakup or divorce can be one of the most stressful and emotional experiences in life. Whatever the reason for the split, and whether you wanted it or not, the breakup of a relationship can turn your whole world upside down and trigger all sorts of painful and unsettling emotions. Even when a relationship is no longer good, a divorce or breakup can be extremely painful because it represents the loss, not just of the partnership, but also of the dreams and commitments you shared. Romantic relationships begin on a high note of excitement and hopes for the future. When a relationship fails, we experience profound disappointment, stress, and grief. Don't fight your feelings. Remember that moving on is the end goal. Pay attention to what you need. Try to consider this period in your life a time out, a time for sowing the seeds of new growth. You can emerge from this experience knowing yourself better and feeling stronger and wiser. One quick community comment before moving on with an update. Adventurous Maybe 170 says, I feel sorry for you to have to deal with that situation. Keep strong for your kids. Take a leave and go travel to anywhere and see something new. You're not doing anything wrong, but she is. Love is precious things and don't waste that for someone who doesn't appreciate that. Keep for someone else. Don't give a beautiful flower to a monkey. They will eat it. Not even sure what to think about that comment, but moving on. Update, recap, new events, question. 
Is my soon-to-be ex-wife gaslighting me about her emotional and probably physical affair? So, for those who don't know my story, I, 36 male, was with my wife since 2004. Dating plus marriage and around 2019, we started going through some turmoil. She gave me a laundry list of things she was unhappy with and how she didn't want to be in a marriage anymore. I first thought was that there was another guy because I had no inclination of her unhappiness as there was little to no communication surrounding it and she didn't want to even try to work on it. I'm sure she was checked out long before this, but that's not necessarily the point of my story. So, FF2 the next couple of years, I worked tirelessly to fix the wrongs and shortcomings, which she said that I did 1000%, but she still wasn't budging. I would randomly find out that she was Snapchatting while we were still together and living together with a friend of my brother's who lives in Indiana that he met through playing Xbox. She always denied that there was anything there, etc, etc. Throughout the two years between 2019 and 2021, she gets super protective of her phone, has a rotating password on it for work, takes it with her everywhere, constantly on it, decking it away if I come into the room. All those red flags. Eventually, in May of 2021, we separate, I move away with the hopes of maybe reconciling in the near future and giving her some space. Before I left the home, I wanted to set some boundaries because if she was testing the waters or seeing someone else, I wanted to know because that's a zero tolerance thing for me. She explicitly said that there wasn't and she'd tell me if there was, so I can move on properly. A few months later, I hear through the grapevine that this guy divorced his wife. Around that time as well, I had asked my soon-to-be ex-wife what we're doing. As in, are we going to try counseling or working on us, or is this just done? And should we head towards divorce? Her only response is, divorce is a scary word. Okay. So, divorce was table, and we kind of just kept on going along this path of separation marriage lumbo. Moving along the timeline, and November of 2021, I discover messages between the two of them, the Snapchat friend, because Snapchat wasn't working that day and she's calling him babe that she missed him, wishes she could drive to see him, etc. I find out later on that she's telling my cousin that I found messages, that I blew up out of proportion. However, like a few weeks or so later, she accidentally sent her group chat a picture of her wearing a sweatshirt to belong to him. Obviously, in my head, I consider all of this to be cheating, even though we were separated. We did have a set boundary about this, and she lied about it. She even went so far as to telling me that I was insecure, needed therapy, which I was already in, and made me feel like a villain for ever questioning her integrity. I had kind of a bad day recently and went off on her about the cheating and how I didn't deserve this. Yes, I know, no contact. And all that she could say was that her and I have very different opinions on this, on the opposite ends of the spectrum, and she can't even comment correctly. So now, I feel like I'm crazy again. Isn't this cheating? I feel dumb even asking a subreddit this question. Unfortunately, signs point to cheating OP. It's hard having a conversation with someone who wants to table a topic. Either way, it sounds like she's not working as hard as you are on making this work. What would be some red flags for you? Let us know in the comments below. And what do you know, just like that, we have a comment from the community. Jujitsu Life says, She is playing the hell out of you. You know when everyone else knows she's cheating. She's for everybody, not you. Move on with your life, king. And the OP chimes in. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, I am. That's all I can do at this point. I can't give her the time of day anymore. Just rough with having two kids together. Still have to engage with her on some level. Wish that I could just go 100% no contact. Update. Things cheaters say to you. Let me start off by saying that my soon-to-be ex-wife and I are definitely on the road to divorce, so this might be a moot point for me, but not so much for people still going through it, even though I kinda am too. Only like five months out from D-Day. But, it's really wild to me some of the crap that cheaters say, and I'm sure it's to justify themselves so they can keep sleeping at night. To this day, my ex still doesn't see what she's done as cheating, and that it's my version versus her truth. Her truth, ha. <laughs> and she'll say, Whatever you want to tell yourself is fine, but I'm not defending myself to you. I'll never forget when I called her out on her BS on D-Day, and her reply was, In my mind, we were done. I know that the end goal is for us all betrayed, is to let go and move on, but some days are harder than others. Right now, she's going to put on her best self for the guy she ultimately left me for, and that hurts to hear about no matter how hard I try to keep that out of my scope, it always seems to make its way back to me. Guess I'm feeling a little slighted and vulnerable this morning. Sorry for the rant. You don't ever have to apologize for speaking the truth, OP. It's normal to feel sad, angry, exhausted, prostrated, and confused. And these feelings can be intense. You may also feel anxious about the future. 
Except that reactions like these will lessen over time. Even if the relationship was unhealthy, venturing into the unknown is frightening. Give yourself permission to feel and to function at a less than optimal level for a period of time. You may not be able to be quite as productive on the job or care for others in exactly the way you're accustomed to for a little while. No one is Superman. Take time to heal, regroup, and re-energize. Sharing your feelings with friends and family can help you get through this period. Consider joining a support group where you can talk to others in similar situations. Isolating yourself can raise your stress levels, reduce your concentration, and get in the way of your work, other relationships, and overall health. Don't be afraid to get outside help if you need it. What do you think? Give OP some of your best breakup advice in the comments below. And while you think of those awesome comments, let's check in with the community for a couple. Six of Wands 2022 says, It just happened. It's not like I was looking to have an affair. I felt disconnected from you. It didn't mean anything. We weren't happy anyway. It's like these morons all read off the same script. It's laughable and pathetic. I myself have gotten all of these over the last three months. Hang in there and don't take any of her crap. Austin, Texas woman chimes in next. This one is my all-time favorite. Hem. I was getting even because you cheated on me first. I've never cheated on you. But you've lost weight and look amazing. And that makes me a cheater? Are you kidding me? Then he gave the new woman my phone number and the harassment began. I think, but can't be sure, that he was trying to instigate a physical fight between me and her. The audacity of those two was insane. Halfway gone too, says, I swear that cheaters all use the same book to quote from. They need a new book. Don't let her lies become your reality. Don't let her decide who you are. You deserve better than that. Call out every lie for what it is. Her reply was, In my mind, we are done. The reply to this is, But we weren't. You're telling a total lie because you didn't have the morals to actually break up with me first, so you cheated. Where you were hedging your bets in case you didn't work out with him. Thanks for joining us today on our space. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Let us know what you thought of today's content in the comments below. See you next time.